this and one mayor, and there's three positions coming up this upcoming May. I'm asking the city of Patterson residents to select me as one of the members to be a part of the city council and city of Patterson. The city council office is a legislative position where they make laws and ordinances uh, for the people of the, of, of the city, and there's three seats available. What I'm asking you is for your support so I can help improve the quality of life, help with the reduction of crime, and job and home ownership opportunities. If you lived in Patterson, if you see Patterson, it's, from, from my perspective, not where it should be. There's trash everywhere, there's a lot of violence, um, there's unemployment, and there's a lack of affordable housing. So what I wanna do with the current members that's there already fighting, I wanna support them and help improve our quality of life in the city of Patterson. So not only can it look better, but it can be a better place for us to live and stay. Um, my number is 4B on the ballot. You know, I'm a, again, my name is Casey Melvin. I'm a lifelong resident. I have 25 years, 25 years of service in the community. I participated in reducing violence in the city. My program, the uh, organization that I work with, Street Keepers and Men Stand Up, we pull five guns off the street during our, during our um, community advocacy. We provided jobs for young individuals who came home from prison and didn't have any opportunities. We provided services for them. We've also been in the school mentoring young individuals to be productive citizens of Patterson. So if, any, if I'm elected in office, I want to do that plus more. The city spends over $1 billion in, 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 in on services, and I don't think our people are getting enough for their money. So if you elect me, my number is 4B on the ballot. I'll do whatever I can to improve our city, improve the lives of our young people, our seniors, and everybody else. The program that I work with now is a violence intervention program. That's what I do 24 hours a day. Our program responds to victims of violence. Anytime that somebody gets shot or stabbed, my program, the Patterson Healing Collective, which is right downtown Patterson, is called to provide services for these individuals. Our program not only deals with treating the, the, the victim of violence to prevent them from being re-injured again and retaliating. It's a known fact that a lot of the violence that in Patterson occurs is a process of retaliating. Something has happened and they're retaliating, retaliating and the cycle repeats. Therefore, we experience a whole lot of violence. So what our program does is we provide services for one, psychological treatment. A lot of times individuals are going through some type of trauma that has been not dealt with. So our program provides licensed cl clinician, clinical social workers to help them unravel and remediate whatever psychological, psychological problems they've been experiencing. We also have a process called restorative circles where two people or, or more disagree. We sit them down in a circle-like format and we try to resolve the issue that caused the violence. So we've been doing that for quite some time. We have a professional staff who's been trained from uh, individuals in Los Angeles and North who specialize in addressing violence. If I'm in office, I want to put a greater investment. Right now, the city has $64 million in COVID for funds, and that not, they're, they're only using a small portion of that to address violence. We're addressing violence from a community perspective. So um, if I'm in office, I, I, I would um, lobby my colleagues to put greater investment in community-based violence intervention because that works. We can't have one solution for violence. It can't be just arrest the individual, arrest them. We need alternatives and community-based violence intervention programs works. We stopped the violence in 2015 where we had 90 days of a peaceful summer by the same method. We've got five guns off the street by the same method. So if I'm elected, we can reach those hard to reach individuals who are constantly involved in criminal activity and violent activity, give them some alternative, and I think that would help reduce the, the violence that we've experienced in our city. With affordable housing and home ownership, I'm also a member of the Habitat for Humanity, which is a home building program whose objective is to provide affordable housing for every individual. Not only do I advocate for uh, uh, affordable rent, but home ownership as well. And home ownership should go towards the residents that live here. A lot of the properties that you see being built are not being built by individuals who live here, and they're charging high rents for those who live here. With the Habitat for Humanity model, they provide low interest to no interest rates 
for home ownership at low cost and all you have to do is come up with a small down payment and qualify but i want to expand that program and put greater investments so individuals can not only be uh can be more than just a tenant they can be a home owner the price we pay for rent you can pay a mortgage so i want to transfer that same type of finances towards home ownership and you get more for your money the, the community will start to look more like a community as opposed to uh, a gentrified neighborhood um, and, and with uh, rental increases our senior citizens are experiencing astronomical increases on their fixed income Right now, I'm, I'm just having discussions with council members to reinvigorate, reinstitute uh, the rent leveling board. The rent leveling board prevents landlords from raising rents no more than 5% beyond what the previous tenant was, was paying. You know, right now with no rent control, rents can be astronomical. But if I'm in office, I will support rent leveling and rent control, especially uh, when it comes to individuals who want a fixed income.